so in order to get to the alternator we need an E12 socket which is just about here Now from underneath. I don't know if I talked about removing the alternator. Probably I did yesterday. I don't for, uh, I don't remember. But you have four bolts on top of it, which are easier to access. They are under the under the steering servo pump, and two just underneath. This one can be unscrewed from underneath the car. This one. And this one can be screwed from the top side. Uh, you will see it from up, upside. Something like you will see it somewhere hanging down there. Now, in order to remove this timing chain cover, we will have to remove the power steering pump, water pulley, because some bolts are. Uh, just behind and uh, Also, we're gonna have to remove the filter, filter air box air box filter um, the compressor the AC compressor and basically I'll show you as much as possible mostly I'll do it off camera to have a speedy work around things so one bolt should be just beneath and one is on the top side okay so next thing that I took out is the pulley uh, which is on the water pump after that it uh, revealed all the screws which are one two three four five with e10 if i remember correctly and the sixth one is with an e13 now um after this i uh unscrewed the power steering pump servo pump two bolts are right over here and the other one is right over here you can see them they are all the same size and I'll be putting them on a magnet over here because I can't remove the the pump I I can remove it but I don't want to it's enough that uh, I got it split from the from the engine now uh, one of the top screws you can fiddle an extension from through here you can see like this and the, the bolt which is facing the cabin you will do that without an extension and the bolt which is facing towards the front of the engine you'll that do that with the extension now next in line is to remove all the auxiliary uh, stuff from the left side of the engine Okay, so next step is to get the air box out. Uh, but to do this, you need to take the cover off, remove the filter, and then expose this bracket. You have to remove this in order to be able to remove the back uh, electrical connector to the ECU. But in order to first do uh, undo this electrical connector, you first undo the first one. So there's a slide which you pull out and it will eject out the electrical connector same thing for this one you have to use something to push against like this in this direction right so what you need to do is disconnect this uh, electrical connector this one from the um, uh, sensor as well and after that you need a pliers which will get you access in 
back there. Let me zoom in a bit. Too much. Yeah, that's it. This is it. So you get access over there and undo that clamp. Once you've done that, you will um, have to unscrew this bolt over here, which is quite easy to do, but which is, uh, this other one is quite tricky to do because of this stupid design which they've built in over here. So this uh, channel won't let you fit regular uh, Torx socket. So what you're gonna have to do is uh, put an tall and thin eight millimeter socket and then do the screw. Once you've done that, you're close to removing it. You just need to lift it up from the back and also push backwards towards the cabin because you have one here, uh, one gasket over here and uh, one uh, gasket over here. Actually, both their grommets. So these two uh, have two prongs going inside of them. So you have to push the airbox up like that, like an airplane. Right. So this is done. Don't have anything else to do right now and uh, except removing the intake manifold and uh, then I can remove the uh, compressor and then I'll be able to reach the compressor down below. It's a lot of work to do but it's worth it. Okay, so next step to remove is, uh, next thing to remove is the injector uh, rail. Basically you have these two screws, you unscrew them and then get a pliers and catch the throat of each injector and pull it up, something like this. Uh, wiggle, it, uh, wiggle it a few times and everything will be exposed. See? Okay, so now I just have to remove the intake, which is relatively simple. Just have to remove this over here and this one over here. Getting closer and closer. <laughs> so after removing the airbox, you are left with removing the fuel injector rail and after that you can remove the intake manifold which is held in by these screws this one this one that one that one over there that one on top and these two come uh, in these holes so definitely you need to remove that at first you also have uh, hard to get hose over here the hose clamp is connected from underneath really bad position anyways um, this one can stay in place you don't have to remove it uh, this one you disconnect it and you're left with this one which is the bad positioned hose clamp I'm gonna I'm thinking of replacing that one with a screwy thing and this is what you're left with. Down below you have to unscrew these two bolts to loosen up this bracket over here which goes to the intercooler pipe. And then you have this hole, this screw over here and this one over here to be able to remove the entire, in, entire compressor. Uh, I don't see anything else left here so hopefully that's it hopefully we don't have to unscrew a lot of other sh shitty stuff yep let's get cracking took the supercharger off it's quite complicated to do it but uh, well, you just have to have patience. So, down there, 
is one of the bolts uh, up top is another bolt and you've got one bolt over here which you, un you, you reach this one from underneath the car and then this one over here also from underneath the car to be able to undo these bottom bolts you have to detach the steering column and uh, you will have better access also you have to remove uh, a bracket which holds two refrigerant lines so those can be moved out of the way in order to access the bolts okay so I don't know if you see it that one is the bolt from underneath uh, this one is the second bolt from underneath and these are the top ones now I just have to remove the AC compressor which has one bolt over here one underneath and another one passing through this uh, channel so what we've done until now is uh, raise the engine from the engine mounts uh, this side was raised all together with the engine mount because otherwise you would risk uh, jumping the chain over the uh, engine mount arm uh, also we've unscrewed the timing cover all the screws were removed we also undone the oil pan screws these are from the oil pan this is from the left uh, the, the right engine mount uh, right and these are from the engine timing cover and after I secured the uh, tool which keeps the timing in place I also will put the zero T to be in line with this uh, notch over here and have a look at the chain this is a worn out chain the timing tensioner is still in in place I'll have to remove the bong which is over here and after that I can remove the timing chain cover uh, the timing chain tensioner and after that I can remove the cover